Hello adventurers. We have another D&D tale today. In this story our protagonist is in a group with a player whose character is the ultimate lone wolf and decides that they have no reason to join the group. Let's get into it. This is less of a horror story and more of an extreme annoyance that's kind of funny in retrospect. Several years ago I had an RPG group in my hometown that I would play with periodically when I was home from college. Most of the group were my friends from high school, but the dungeon master, who we shall call Matt, was a few years older than us and invited some people he knew. One of them was Kyle. Kyle was mostly unremarkable when I first met him. The homebrew system campaign had already been going on for several sessions when I joined. He was playing a pretty standard fighter type character, but he was always trying to use a bow in melee combat. This is of course not the optimal strategy, but he would get mad at us or usually Matt when his attacks would miss, sometimes insinuating that Matt had made the system wonky in order to specifically screw with him. Oh well, the guy's not a min-maxer, that's probably a good thing. We finish up the campaign and start a new one. He tells us his new character is going to be this disgraced drunk priest trying to redeem himself. I think that sounds cool. Session 1 arrives. The party assembles for the heist or whatever the adventure was. Kyle has yet to speak. Kyle, what's your character doing? Probably just at the bar drinking. I have no reason to join the group. We all look at each other, confused. He knows that this is a cooperative game, right? I've encountered this type of player multiple times and I've heard about them from other people, but this was my first experience with it. We ignore him for the time being and mess around the starting town for a bit, looking for plot hooks and such. Matt periodically asks Kyle if he's going to join the group and Kyle just keeps saying he has no reason to. We should have confronted Kyle directly about this, but at the time our philosophy was that this was an in-character issue that needed to be dealt with in character. Combat starts at some point and Kyle's character joins the fray. Afterwards we try to engage him, but he says that he runs off because he has no reason to speak to us. Now this is just complete nonsense. We just fought a literal battle together and you don't want to say a single word to us? We decided Kyle's lost cause and move on with the plot. But Kyle says he's going to follow the party at a distance. So his character has no reason to speak to us or travel with us, but apparently does have a reason to tail us. There's another combat on the road at some point, and he does the exact same thing. Runs in to help with the fight, then runs away the second it's over. This later happens for a third time, but our characters confront him to ask what the hell he's doing. Out of character he says something like, well if you guys are going to force me to join, fine. What? I return to college and regularly talk to my friends in the group. They regale me with stories of similar stuff he continues to pull whilst I'm away. About a year later I'm back home and Matt wants to return to the first campaign after a time skip. This would put Kyle's fighter as pushing 60 years old, so Kyle wants to make a new character, but wants the fighter to go out in a blaze of glory. Not an unreasonable request in my opinion. Since other people also wanted to make new characters, Matt decides to do a one-shot prequel to set up the time skip and allow anyone who wants to retire their characters to do so in that session. The general plot was that two factions of angels were in a war that threatened to destroy the world, so we, the heroes, were gathering artifacts and such to actually be able to fight against them. The whole session is Kyle going about how awesome his death is going to be. We reach a temple that we knew the angels couldn't enter for some reason, which was clearly the end point of the session. As we approach we are ambushed by cultists and an actual angel, which we knew from experience we had no chance of killing. It's exceedingly obvious to the rest of the table that Kyle is meant to sacrifice himself to stall the angel whilst we run past the safe zone. On Kyle's turn he drops everything and runs for the temple. I don't remember what happened next, but the mood was basically ruined. Especially when we end the session and Kyle says, well, I guess I won't get the cool death after all. Kyle, Matt says, you were supposed to sacrifice yourself fighting a super powerful angel to protect your friends. Uh, that's not cool. Why would I do that? Kyle then spends the next several weeks asking when we're going to have another session so he can get his cool death. We don't play for a long time after that. And when Matt finally starts again, myself and the others in the group beg him not to invite Kyle, which he doesn't. I play a few sessions of this before once again being absent for a while. One weekend I'm back in town and jump back into the game for a session. And guess what? Kyle is there. I should have left when I saw him. This would go on to be the most infuriated I've ever been during a session. First off, Kyle clearly hasn't prepared a character. He blames this on Matt for refusing to help him. However, I know for a fact he's had access to character creation info for months because we're in the same Facebook group where Matt sent it to us. He eventually decides he wants to play a fighter. 
Then he begins constantly interrupting the session to ask what his abilities are. Again, he has full access to this information. He then, once again, refuses to join the party. Like an idiot, I decide to handle this in character, and I'm basically begging this random guy to join our group hunting down a hag. And he just keeps saying, Nah, why would I do that? I have no reason to do that. He then, once again, follows our group and camps with our group, but refuses to talk to us, because he has no reason to. The final straw comes when we finally find the hag we're hunting, and he joins the hag, because he has no reason to help us, but he does apparently have a reason to help this lady who we know is kidnapping children. This was not some sort of plot twist here Matt cooked up, because Matt was just as confused. We end the session there because it was getting late, we probably shouldn't have started combat anyway. I tell Matt if he's going to keep playing with Kyle, then don't bother inviting me. Another year or more goes by. I've been back home permanently after college, playing with Matt fairly regularly, and I haven't heard anything from Kyle. I show up to a session one night, and who walks in but Kyle? I shake my head. Whatever. It's not like I have anything better to do tonight. We're now playing 5th edition. Kyle clearly hasn't even thought about looking at a player's handbook. He doesn't even have a character prepared. He's once again interrupting the session to ask basic questions. A couple of people at the table try to help him in between turns, but he won't even give us the most basic information about what kind of character he wants to play. And, once more, he won't join the party. Matt says, OK Kyle, the party is leaving town. I have no reason to be with the party. I don't know what they're doing. I'm hanging out in the tavern. After several years, I finally realise nuance is not going to accomplish anything with this 30 plus year old man, and I say, Kyle, this is a role playing game, and you can do what you want, but the party's leaving, if telling us that you're just hanging out in a tavern repeatedly is your idea of fun, that's fine, but the players are leaving. Well, okay, when you put it that way, he says in a defeated voice, like I just refused to give him a puppy for Christmas. He spent the session doing nothing but occasionally commenting that he was carrying a barrel of beer he stole from the tavern on his back. I just don't understand how these people have fun. And there we have it. Here we are again. Whilst I have no problem with lone wolf style characters in a campaign, stories like this are a nice way to highlight that what the majority of tabletop RPG players would take to be a tacit agreement, that is that the group will come together and play together, isn't so tacit after all and for some people, it really does need to be spelled out. There's nothing wrong with a lone wolf style character, as long as the player understands the game isn't just about them, and that the group won't chase them down whenever they go off on their own. In fact, a well done lone wolf story with a character slowly coming around and realising that they need and care for the group around them can be some of the most heartwarming RP if done well enough. What are your experiences with lone wolf players, good or bad? That's all I have for tonight. But remember, the tavern is always open. Good night.